Up your games. Loud. Loud game. Loud game. Hardcore, hardcore. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them, but I must admit, okay. I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. It's fine. If Heather can do it, so can I. This isn't Dead Rising. Yeah, well, I don't care. I'm just, I'm playing the old man a game. He arranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said the floors made it louder, but when I smiled at her, she just frowned and what? walked away. The old lady arranged some She doesn't like when I smile. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. Sprint. Ow! It's lava. You should play game with. Huh? What are you even talking about? How the heck? How the heck do you? How do you run and sprint with the... Those are horrible buttons to do it with. When I Here. reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, That'll do. For now. For now? Begin. Be bold and venture to be wise. My little pony. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived okay. with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Oh. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor okay. always called him Anton. The For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. That's so mean. the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here, he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the oh. driver in the post office robbery. Although it all Why would you rob a reason. post office? Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. 
I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Oh. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger, she had been a TV chef. Then, years later, she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. Oh. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a poo in a shoebox. What? The next morning, the old man gathered everyone together to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could yeah, he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dex job. What the heck? Now, now, said the old man. We have company, pointing to some important looking people. Oh my. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. Hey. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. Nice. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Okay. Oh. Hey, I Everybody made it. Clapped, except for the important looking men. Dang. Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? Said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. I can move okay, left okay, too. Said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. Hey. Ow, what the heck? Ow, I messed up. I keep failing my jumps. I did it. The Garys then rearranged the room one last time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. Yeah, father. I'll make you proud, father. Easy. The old man's friends <gasps> actually seemed quite happy when I made it. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill bot 3000, 
but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. Yeah. A couple of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. My own room. Yeah, she I got my own bedroom. She also wanted some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw, I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi, anything anyone wanted to watch I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box, he plugged some cables into the television, and said, this is what I meant, when I said video games. <laughs> I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. Pong. Table tennis for two. They couldn't get Pong. Oh. What the heck? How am I not winning? Hey, it got a point. Oh no. I got win. No. Oops. Okay, easy win. <laughs> Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day out by the sea so that Heather could take some photos. Although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. Heather didn't when the like old man me. Asked Why? The professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing. It could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, That's what you said about the Game Boy. Ah, and, uh, ha, ha, ha. How about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch of Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. Uh. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. Nice. Look at that car. I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. D <laughs> what? As the old man and I stood on the cliff tops, 
I could see something in the distance. I wasn't yeah. sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. Oh. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. Oh my she was safe. gosh, she's dead. Even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was going to be. So I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. I gotta save Heather. Oops. Speed run. Whoa. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Heather was unconscious, and her leg was broken, so Ouch. I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the way. Oh, I just can't run. Safe. An Did ambulance it. had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. I did it. I'm a, a helpful few days robot. Later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. She likes me now. Hair robot. Nice. Nice. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. Yeah. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. Uh. After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries. Oh my goodness. As when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Oh. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. Stonehenge. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Mm. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe, Douglas Adams, everything really. When I asked him why were we here, why did we exist, he just smiled and said, 
Life is like a game, just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. Purpose? So I asked him, what's my purpose? Purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? I want to be a real which boy! Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man <laughs> said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. I must have looked unimpressed. As he then said, okay. I want you to clean one million things. Oh! It didn't sound like the meaning one of One million? But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. A man can't have everything. Where would he put it? Learning my purpose. The next day, the old man said he wanted to install some more software. So he powered me down. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me, and that I oh. should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke. So the old man powered me down again. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke. But it wasn't very funny. The old man then explained that he had installed a special chip which allowed me to clean away anything that was broken. He mm. said it also tells me how many things are nearby, and how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all sounded very complicated, but he said all I really had to do was pause, and it would bring up all the information I needed. He then said okay. he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. Hey. Oh. Fifteen jump combo. How much is in the area? Junk here, junk held. Getting close. Junk, the old buddy. man then asked the old lady Heather and I to follow him outside. Hmm. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. Lovely. The old man said he was worried that Alice had been calling again. She had filled uh -oh. up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. No. The old man thought for a second, then said, Using the step-toe chip, I should find and clean at least 300 things. When we explained Step to Alice chip. what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. But after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell, she said it would be okay. One last thing, said the old man. If you want to use a door, just, just push, push up. up. When I was about to enter the old barn, 
Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms growing inside. He asked me to give him any that I found. He then winked. But I wasn't sure why. <laughs> okay. junk lady why you got so much stuff in here I need so many bicycles I get all the junk. was very happy with everything that I had Yay. cleaned, but I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. <laughs> He's getting high off shrooms. It wasn't the days getting shorter or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, the leaves must fall before the blossom comes. Ah. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously heard enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. A party? For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. Halloween? terrifying. Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, as everyone kept shouting, it's the great pumpkin. Still, at least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. And I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. It's me. After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. 
Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed. But I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. I wasn't Barbara. happy about this. But the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. Barbara. Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations. So I thought I should clean up the plates and glasses. Okay. The ear splitting sound was the fire alarm. Uh -oh. As usual, Mr. Deck blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. Uh -oh. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. Uh -huh. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. When we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked, and playing his guitar. He oh, shouted hurts. down, When I finish this song, I'm going to fly. The old lady said, Oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, You know what to do. Uh... Dude, I can make it up there in time. Oh. By the time oh, I had I made, it, made up it to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down, but he was acting even more bizarre than usual. Oh, he's on shrooms. <laughs> Local idiot. After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Ha 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 Still, ha, ha, he was still ha. laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. <laughs> so he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. Duh. I don't think he liked that either. But at least he was still in one piece. Ha 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 he ha hoo hoo ha. Oh, okay, I'm dead. A month or so later, Heather and I were playing video games. Nine. When the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived. So, he had a present for me. <gasps> a teddy bear. He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform. He then told me I should try to pick it up. What the heck? How the heck did he reach up there?
that. Let me go in the... Try as I might, I couldn't reach the teddy bear. However, I still don't understand what happened next. He had a heart attack. I went to sleep. He's dead. Bicycle and mushrooms. Oh, she's hoarding bikes again. Incorrect. Oh, why? I'm in a tomb now. Why? Back to sleep. They left me in the tub, in the bathroom. Circle. Many circles. The universe. Eyeball. The sun, the planet, Earth, Pangea. Oh, 
A screensaver. Video game. Hello? Was I dead? Was this heaven? I'm awake. It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. It was the basement bathroom. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. The yeah. old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Amazingly, the what shoes the allowed me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was the hat. Maybe she was the hat. Nothing is beautiful from every point of view. A world ripped apart. Oh my goodness. It's definitely confusing. Part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. I need a key! I had to be careful. The electricity was going haywire in some places. Haywire? Oh. Oh, weird. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where Whoa. had everybody gone? Where had everyone gone? A lot of statues. I was slightly scared. This was the first time I had been outside on my own. A lot of bullet holes. I knew what I had to do. This had to be my purpose. I would I dream a million things so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant. Whatever that meant. Playing everything. I was surprised to see an old man, but not as oh. surprised as he was. It turned out he was blind. He was kneeling on the floor with his hand in a drain. When I asked him what he was doing, he said his cat had crawled into the pipes, and he was trying to get her out. Is people still alive here? He was very happy when I offered to help. He said there was no way we could reach her from here, so if I was willing, I could make my way through the sewers and get her from the other end. He said he would turn off the water for as long. I did not mean to. Uh oh. Long as possible, but I would have to run, as the pipes would soon fill up again. I happily agreed. So he gave me a key. 
He said this will open all the sewer gates. Go through here, then down the ladder, and through the big door at the bottom. It's okay. Just cleaning up some trash. Yeah, all the junk. Oh my goodness. I better run. I forget I forget the jump button I sprint button and the ba da 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 How am I supposed to get that? Junk. Oh. Oh my goodness. Can't get up there. Okay. Jump 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 I was doing it again, I was pressing the run button to jump. Oh my goodness, dude. I found the old man's cat. She was fine, if Bro, a little confused. Why the heck did you put your cat? Oh my goodness. I was horrified. It looked like me. 
but it shambled around like something from the film we watched on Halloween. Got your cat, buddy. The man was happy to have his cat back. He looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, Those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. <laughs> what? Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. If I had my way, we'd have blown up the lot of them when we had the chance. What? I wasn't sure what he meant. But I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed. And said, don't worry, I know who you are. And told me that he knew the old man. Oh. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man. In fact, he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. And he did. He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind a cupboard. Then he continued saying, the old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, wait a minute, it's empty isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. I was robbed a few months ago, he said, almost in a whisper. It's strange, they took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. The man looked sad, so Atlas. I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest, to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. He said I was welcome to go back through the pipes any time I wanted, as there were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away. Okay. It's hundred sixty. Oh, there's that many things at the bottom. What the hood? I'd probably become like waterproof or something. Eventually. Five five thousand junk, easy. Let me go back. Cause I feel like this is the right way. Let's just get like the junk over here first. Oh. 
Gotta clean up some junk first. Okay, I'll help was you. Coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire. Oh my goodness. There's nothing here. Negative 80 junk? How the heck did that work? The people screaming turned out to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. At first the man looked mm -hmm. like he was ready, ready to, to fight. fight me. But after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. Oh. What am I doing? I dropped the children off at the front door and promised them that I would be back with their parents. Oops. Front row. The fire was getting much worse. So the woman went next. I don't know <laughs> how that works, but sure. When we got to the front door, all the woman said was, Thank you. Please hurry. Uh oh. Oops. Oh, the bathroom's still fine. By the time I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment. Oh my goodness. I was ready to go. Dang, I can barely jump. dead Ooh. I did it I'm a hero oops I helped the family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got to camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. Okay. There wasn't anything I could clean. But to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games hey. console. With a bit of fiddling, I was able to get them to work. So How? I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said, There was a war. War? Yes. A war said the man. 
one side of the planet attacked the other, and before we knew, it was all over. Everything gone. Oh my Everything goodness. Everything destroyed. Leave all major cities. Well, it's late, said the woman. We should really get some sleep. Help yourself to anything you need, and we'll see you tomorrow. In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring, constant electrical surges from the unreliable power plant, yeah. take your pick. He said, Sounds if like, we had the money, looks like uh, your son kind of set the fire of the house on feed fire. Ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war, my lovely wife used to be a fisherman. Fisherwoman? Fishing person? I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from a fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. No. I was a little scared. But then they gave me some captain software, and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. What? They just had that? <laughs> okay. They just had that lying around, okay. John cleared. What the heck? I can't jump that. I can't get all this junk. I'm not waterproof yet. I don't know why that garbage can. Why is that garbage can so special? Huh? How do I interact with the garbage can? I want to see it. Left, up, jump shields is why. Left, right, up, down. Jump is space. Run is sure X. Shields can be Z, I guess. Shoulder barge. I think I should be down here. It's gonna be a lot of backtracking because I can't get places.
How much junk is here? Oh, only 300. Basketball court. What the? Hmm? The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. There's no basketball to play, though. Okay. Junk combo. I got a junk combo. How is there like trash on top of these things? How do like they get up to the Okay. Maybe. Junk 200 still. What the? Mm -hmm. I'm in space. <sighs> oh, I'm all the way over here. What happens if I jump sideways? There was actually something out there. Oh. Dance Invader. I get to go. No, no, not in the tent. Really? I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. To the mainland. Oh, the fisherman it's a was bit. Right. Everything was in pieces. Desolate out here. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town. My goodness. Okay.
How much junk is here? A lot of junk I can't do anything about. What the heck? Can't magnetize to this wall. Got all the junk in there, though. confronted oh, by a dog. horrible fat old dog. <laughs> okay. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. Silton. Oh. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I I'm mean, dead? it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then showed me into what was surprisingly <laughs> a really nice house. Uh. Please excuse my husband, <gasps> said the pregnant lady. I'm Edwina, but everyone calls me Eddie. I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met. Said the small man, it was me that delivered that thing, remember? All you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. Huh? And, I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. <laughs> and I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What with you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph. It was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton. Hey, it's me. It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. The professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. Uh. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. He's... he's dead, said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Anyway, said Mr. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. Oh. Time for bed, I think, said Mr. Silton. Make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. No Illuminati. Oh my goodness, I'm flying. Why is it inverse flying? I'm coming!
the face of him flying down. I can't reach you. Where are you going? Oh, bro. Oh, it's where the heart is. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces, it wasn't. Well, the war, said Mr. Silton. Barry, interrupted his wife, can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out of the room, huh. leaving me with Mr. Preston. All of a sudden, okay. Mr. Silton appeared. How about a tune-up, he said. Mrs. Silton started to make some food, and Mr. Preston was playing with the dog. Leaving me to chat with Mr. Silton, I said that I really wanted to see everyone else, but Mr. Silton said that it wouldn't be that easy. Traveling now, especially for a robot, is complicated. Go back to the house, you could even do some cleaning. Wait there and I'll work out a way to get you to each of them. I told him that I couldn't get into the main house because the hallway ceiling had collapsed. I have just the thing, oh. said Mr. Silton, as he pulled some sort of card out of his pocket. If you can get into the caves under the church next door to the house, you can use this security pass to get into the old man's laboratories. You can get into the main house that way. I was so excited, I would be able to get back into my old room, I said thanks, Yay. and made my way to the front door. Also, I think you might be able to help us out, said Mr. Silton, but we will meet up back at the old man's house in a couple of days, you head there and we'll see you soon. Okay. Twenty thousand junk. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. The huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. The huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. Okay, I understand. You don't know how to get inside. Oops. Probably not the best idea. Oh my goodness. I took oh the fisherman's goodness. boat to the old man's estate. There's junk down here. Old church. Yeah, there's definitely speed or speed run tech with the the falling. As I walked through the old church ruins, I was surprised to hear Mr. Silton calling me. He said he had forgotten to give me something, and the church's community hall would be the perfect place to try it out. Oh, as yeah. soon as we walked into the hall, Mr. Silton said he had a present for me. Gloves! It was a pair of Atlas gloves. They made me think of the old blind man with the cat, and his stolen Atlas gloves. 
I wonder if Mr. Silton knew how lucky he was to still have them with a glove thief around. <laughs> Mr. Silton asked me to try the gloves on and okay. start chucking things around. But not start him. Chucking. He was very clear about that. Mr. Silton suggested we clean the hall. Of course I knew when he said we, he meant me. But I was happy to try out my new gloves. He said I should clear everything off of the basketball court and put the things on the floor either side. I fiddled with the settings for a bit, but when mm. Mr. Silton saw I was having trouble, he produced a small manual. He explained that pressing down and X would pick a thing up. X would then throw the thing, and if I wanted to place it on the floor, I should again press down and X. Oh yeah. He looked more and more confused as he read all this, but eventually he finished by saying, Well, I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me. Baby Jesus. Is this what he wants me to do? Let's see what else these gloves okay. can do, said Mr. Silton as he flicked through the manual. He actually looked quite excited when he explained that holding X while walking into or under a falling thing would allow me to catch it. I must admit, I was then really happy when he suggested they make it a game and I try to catch 10 basketballs. Oh okay. yeah. Next, Mr. Silton suggested we make it a real game and see how quickly I could score 10 baskets. Okay. I enjoyed this so much. It felt just like the good old days. 
Oh. Except Mr. Silton wasn't as forgiving as the old man. Did it. When I'd scored 10 baskets, Mr. Silton gave me what he called a high five. What pal? He said I now knew everything about the gloves and I should be able to continue through the basement of the church into the house. When I asked him if he was coming with me, he just laughed and said they would catch up with me in the main hall. What pal? I was stood in a gigantic cavern. When I looked huh. down, I was horrified to see hundreds oh of goodness. corpses of those things. As horrible as it sounds, my stepdaughter Chip said they were things to clean. So clean them I would. Oh. Must clean the bodies. I must become waterproof. That must be the door Mr. Silton talked about. How am I gonna get there? exactly Clear. as Mr. Silton had described it. I just hoped that the card he had given me was the security key and not just some backstage pass. <laughs> well, it opened the door. But soon an alarm went off. Uh -oh. Something caught my eye. It's a small yellow sphere. The book next to it explained like that it was a shield head. that would automatically take a hit for me when activated. The Y button took the shield in and out of storage, meaning I could save it for when the going got tough. 
It seemed that I started with two slots to carry shields, but I could upgrade to be able to carry more. If both I and the shield died in the same room, the Lazarus chip would bring us both back. Mm. It's almost as if the shield needed its sacrifice to mean something. It felt like a true friend, proving that even the simplest of faces can bring out an emotional reaction. What that machine was. Wait, does that not count as junk? Get all the junk? What other junk is there? Uncleared. I can make that jump. I didn't. I thought I could. I didn't think I could jump high enough. Something literally caught my eye. Whoa. I remembered the old man had installed some software that helped show me things that were interactive. Eagle and how eye. To interact with them. This must be what he was talking about. The electron gun blew the power. I needed to turn it back on before I could fire again. It's a boss fight. Oh, 
boss fight. I did it. Oh, I can collect this junk. This seemed quite valuable. Easy boss fight. The video record is blinking light caught my eye. It must have been years since I had seen a film or TV what show. The heck? Ghost. Maybe I could take a little break from my quest and watch the film on the tape. As the video started, oh. I was surprised to see the old man. Hello, hello, he bellowed in his familiar tone. This is test number, um, 107C. He continued as he read from a clipboard. This unit still has three major issues. One. The shell is so incredibly thick that the whole machine is still far too large and heavy. 2. The missile system is too unpredictable and aggressive. And 3. The trade-off between power and intelligence is far too great. Hmm. I think the military capabilities would be far too dangerous in the wrong hands. Uh -oh. I think we would be best to push forward with the Innocence Project. I didn't really understand a word of what he said, and I was slightly disappointed that he had recorded over the film, but it was nice to see the old man's face again. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure what was going on, but suddenly, inanimate objects started to come to life. Got the bike. Got all the junk. Okay, the rock is much lighter than the trash can. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh my goodness, I made it. Okay. I should try picking that up. Just him. Oh my goodness, what the heck? Okay. Sure. Like I can ride this. That is just rude. Okay. Collected. Oh, oh my God. Fine, I got the goods.
spot that robot. Eleven junk combo. It's weird. It, okay. Why is what the heck? Oh my goodness. Oh, what? That's fine. It's all good in the hood. Batteries come in all shapes and sizes. Interesting. How the heck? Um, that's. Worked differently, how I don't know how I imagined. What the heck? Oh. I to... I'm confused what you want from me.
my goodness. I don't know how to get rid of those. The arm made me wonder if there were any more recordings of the old man. I rummaged behind the TV and was not surprised to find two more dusty old tapes. One just had hours of some strange sport. Oh. It's all different sports, but, but the other had a recording okay. of the old man. Hello, hello, came his voice again. Right, this is urgent. Cancel the nanobot program immediately, all production to be stopped. Contain the remaining units in these corrosion-proof canisters. Huh. Although I'm sure it's obvious, the old man continued. We have discovered that they are essentially unstoppable and can form a controlling intelligence around any object. say more well at least huh. that explained why everything moved with minds of their own I'd never been in this part of the house before but I figured I would get back to more familiar surroundings once I made it through these laboratories the beer to eat Junk upon junk. Give me all that junk. What the heck? I jump, I hover, I get the junk faster or better. Nice.
Oh, it's this place. What the heck? Are you serious, bro? Easy. See? Ether. Snake. Oh. Destroy the humanoid. Oh my goodness. It's, what is happening? Boss fight. Oh, it's literally a snake. just happened. Ow. Guess everything exploded. I did it. I did it. Easy. I needed to get back on the moving lift.
What's the other go door go to? My shoes struggled to grip the slippery wall. I'd need to keep jumping to climb it. Are you? That is interesting. Oh, this one is blocked. Oh my gosh, really? Why oh, do you need so many shoes? Nice, all the junk. Oh. No, no. Bro, could have just done that it's earlier. All right. We'll claim it on the insurance as accidental damage. Get me a new TV as well. I explained to them that I had found some of the old man's home videos, and the contents had shocked me. The dirty old bugger, interrupted Mr. Silton. But I didn't know what he meant. So I continued explaining about the nanobots, and Mr. Silton said we needed to get our sharpest minds on the case. Not you dipshit, he barked at Mr. Oh Preston. My goodness. We need to rescue Heather and her mum. Mum. I wasn't sure what Mr. Silton meant by rescue, but I thought I would leave them to clear up. Clear up? The weather felt cold and ominous as we made our way back outside. Before we meet the others, I need you to help me get my stolen van back, explained Mr. Silton. Okay. It's going to be dangerous, and we need someone expend uh, dependable. Uh. The equipment was heavy, but I was happy to help pack the large boxes until Preston returned with what Mr. Silton called the mean machine. The mean machine? All we are is dust and shadow. Mr. Preston seemed even more anxious than usual. At first I thought he just needed to use a toilet. But Mr. Silton explained that their old gang members lived around here. Oh. Somehow the money went missing when we robbed that post office, he continued. For some reason they thought we'd taken it, but... As he put it, why would we live in such a dump if we had a load of money? Although this clarified things for me, it certainly didn't calm Mr. Preston, who suggested we gotta move on. 
don't worry, we'll be a matter of minutes, we just need to send Mr. Chips up there to have a look, said Mr. Silton as he pointed to a window high up the building. Oh my goodness. Go on, he said with a smile, off you go then. The what the heck? stream I'm tired bye stream bye 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 stream